Hey there, Leo here. Today, you're gonna to learn everything that you need to know when getting started using variables in Rust. You're gonna learn how to declare variables, what shadowing is, what mutability is, what type annotation is, and at the very end of this video, you're going to be tested on that knowledge. So, let's get coding. In Rust, you declare variables using the let keyword, followed by the variable name, and optionally a type annotation. I'm a big fan of examples, so let's check this out now. Say let score colon i8 equals 10. You might say, Leo, what is this i8 and what is this type annotation? Well, every variable has a type and Rust must be able to determine the type you're using if you don't explicitly set it. In this code, the i8 is an 8-bit signed integer type. And if this sounds confusing, don't worry, we're gonna cover types in the next video. And if I go ahead and delete this, you'll actually notice this thing called a type inlay. This is from installing Rust Analyzer in the previous video that actually implicitly creates score as an I32 or a signed 32-bit integer. Again, something that you don't have to know right now and that we'll cover in the next video. But what happens if we try to add to this value score? Let's say someone scored another point. The so score equals score plus one. We can see here that it's already giving us an error. And the reason there's an error is states cannot mutate immutable variable score. And that's something to note. In Rust, variables are immutable by default. In other words, once a value is bound to a variable, it cannot be changed. You might think this is strange coming from a different language, but immutable by default has a ton of benefits, which we'll get into later. But for now, how do we get around this problem? No, Rust allows you to shadow a variable by declaring a new variable with the same name in the same scope. This effectively masks the previous variable. Let's go ahead and do this now. Say let score equals 11. And notice we're even changing the type here. So previously it was an I32 and now it's a string slice. Let's print out the score just to be certain we understand what's happening. Let me see, the score is 11. Shadowing lets you change the type of a variable or provide a more refined value within a nested scope. So we can actually adjust the scope here by adding parentheses. So what do you think we're gonna get here? If you said 11 and then 10, you'd be absolutely right. We see the inner scope score is 11, the outer scope score is 10. We could also delete this shadow here. And now what do you think we'll get? If you said two tens in a row, you're absolutely right. But what happens if we want to actually change the variable? If I say score equals score plus one, I get an error, unless we make this mutable using the mute keyword. And now when I go ahead and run this, we'll see the score is 10 and then the score is 11. We can also create something called a constant and constants are like immutable variables, but they must be declared with the const keyword and their values must be known as compile time. Contrast this with immutable variables that can have values determined at runtime, but cannot be changed after initialization. You might use constants for something like the max score. So let's see this in action here. Const max score by 32 equals 100. And now I can use or print out this max score wherever I want to. So I'm gonna copy this paste this, the add max score out here, and let's run it. So we see the inner scope score is 10, the outer scope score is 11, and the max score is 100. And notice that the constant is a global declared outside of the main function. So what are the key points? You use let to declare variables, and variables are immutable by default for safety and predictability reasons. Use mute to make variables mutable or changeable, and use const for values that never change and that are known at compile time. Okay, now it's time to test our knowledge using Rustlings. Rustlings provides small exercises to get you used to reading and writing code. So let's start with variables one. We see here a main function, x equals five, and then the print line macro with x has the value we have a placeholder here and then the variable x, which will use string interpolation to essentially substitute this placeholder with the value of x. But what's the problem? Why are we getting this nasty error message? If you said it's because we don't have the let keyword, you're correct. So let's go ahead and run that. We can say, perfect, it ran. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove, I'm not done, and we'll get to the next one. 
Okay, so what's going on here? We have the main function, let x. If x equals equals 10, x is 10, else it's not 10. Well, the problem is x doesn't have a value. So if I say x, let x equal 10 and save it, it will compile. So x is 10. You can also make it 11, and that will make it go to the else and we'll see that x is not 10. Okay, now what's going on with variable three? We have the main function, let x equals then i32, and they were trying to print it. Well, you can't print something that's not initialized. So we need to set it to some type of i32. So we'll say 10, and that worked perfect. Okay, now let's go to number four we see a main function, let x equals three, and then we print the number x. We then set x equals five, and we're instructed not to change this line, and then we print it again. So we can't shadow because it says don't change this line, so we need to make this mutable. We save it, and we then print out the number three, the number of five, and that works. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Here we have a string literal, which is three, that we bind to a string slice number. And then we print it out, and then we set number equal to three. You may think we could make this mutable, but that would throw an error because Rust is statically typed, and the type of every variable must be known at compile time and cannot change at runtime. Instead, what we need to do is shadow number by adding let to the declaration. So let number equals three, save that, and the code is compiling. Okay, one more to go. In variable six, we see we have this const number equals three, and then we're trying to print it out. If you remember from the earlier lesson, constants need to be annotated. So we could just make this an i8, i32, whatever we want, and save this, and we're done. Great job. If you were able to follow all of this, you're able to declare variables, you understand shadowing, you understand mutability, you understand constants, and in the next video, you're gonna learn all about the various types in Rust.